or how to understand the economic welfare and voting issues in a society. Hicks was born in Warwick, United Kingdom on April 8, 1904. He died on 20 of May 1989 in Blockley, United Kingdom. His father was a journalist on a local newspaper. He was educated with an expensive education financed by mathematical scholarships. He studied at Clifton College and Oxford University between 1917 and 1926, where he focused on economics, math, philosophy, and politics. After graduating, he lectured at the London School of Economics and Political Science from 1926 to 1935. He also taught at Cambridge University and the University of Manchester before returning to Oxford in 1946. Hicks married fellow economist Ursula Webb in 1935. The couple had no children. He was knighted in 1964 for his work in economics and was awarded the Nobel Prize in 1972. I want to share three statements Hicks produced which seem to me very important to understand his work. Quote, investment is a flight of bird which needs to be controlled. End of quote. Quote, there is much of economic theory which is pursued for no better reason than its intellectual attraction. It is a good game. We have no reason to be ashamed of that, since the same will hold for many branches of mathematics. End of quote. Quote, Some of the most serious fallacies of traditional economics have been due to confusion between optimum and equilibrium conditions. The apparent influence of Dr. Pangloss upon the development of economic thought is for the most part nothing but pure intellectual error. End of quote. Arrow was born in New York, USA on August 23 of 1921. He died on 21 of February 2070, Palo Alto, USA. He was born to immigrant parents. He had his formative experiences shaped by poverty. His businessman father lost everything in the Depression. But Arrow flourished at the school and received an MA in mathematics from Columbia University at the age of 19. He interrupted his graduate studies to serve as a wartime weather researcher and U.S. Army Air Corps captain. From 1946, Arrow spent his time as a graduate student at Columbia, as a research associate at the Cowles Commission for Research at the University of Chicago, and worked at the Rand Corporation in California. He received his PhD from Columbia in 1951. Arrow taught at several universities and was a major figure in neoclassical economic theory. Arrow married Selma Schweitzer in 1947. I want to share three statements Arrow produced which seem to me very important to understand his work. Quote, Knowledge is a free good. The biggest cost in its transmission is not in the production or distribution of knowledge, but in its assimilation. This is something that all teachers know. End of quote. Quote, Vast ills have followed a belief in certainty. End of quote. Quote, Trust is an important lubricant of a social system. It is extremely efficient it saves a lot of trouble to have a fair degree of reliance on other people's word. Unfortunately, this is not a commodity which can be bought very easily. If you have to buy it, you already have some doubts about what you have bought. End of quote. Hicks made several important contributions to economic theory during his career. These contributions range from fundamental neoclassical price theory to macroeconomic modeling. He shared the honor with Kenneth J. Arrow. Their work on general equilibrium analysis and warfare economics earned the Nobel Award. Hicks' first book, Theory of Wages, developed and the microeconomics of wage determination in competitive and regulated labor markets. It would be used to demonstrate how labor-saving processes don't have a direct impact in the reduction of the share of national income. The concept of elasticity of substitution between capital and labor became his basis to dispute Karl Marx's theory. This book became a standard textbook on labor economics for decades. His book Value and Capital, which was published in 1939, is generally considered his third major accomplishment in economics. In it, he advanced the utility and price theory with his introduction of the Hicksian compensated demand curve. He also explored the concept of composite goods to simplify demand modeling along with the exploration of the income effects and substitution effect. Hicks also advanced the microeconomic analysis of interactions in value and capital between markets by 
formalizing a model of comparative aesthetics and introduce the Russian general equilibrium theory to the English-speaking world. These models show how changes in markets impact conditions in other markets and how all the individual markets in an economy interact to yield an overall equilibrium for all markets. In welfare economics, Hicks is well known for his Hicks compensation principle, also known as Hicks efficiency. This concept can be used as a criterion to judge the costs and benefits of changes to economy and economic policy by comparing the losses for the losers with the gains for the winners. Hicks ISLM model formalized Keynesian macroeconomic theory to show how an economy can be in equilibrium with less than full employment. Hicks ISLM model is designed to show the relationship between the market for economic goods and loanable funds, which is also known as the money market. This model is a common classroom tool in macroeconomics and is sometimes used to assess macroeconomic stabilization policies as well as economic fluctuations. The former is called IS or investment savings, while the latter is known as LM. The model is depicted on a graph where the IS and LM intersect at the point where between the short-run equilibrium and the interest rates and output. It is often used to highlight how market preference changes affect the balance of interest rates and GDP. Kenneth Arrow made a major contribution to the general equilibrium theory which describes how the whole economy is connected. Using new mathematical methods, he renewed the equilibrium theory and put it on a stable theoretical basis. Arrow also contributed strongly to the welfare economy, where he proved theorem about its optimality. Most famous is Arrow for his impossibility set. He showed that under general criteria, it is impossible to justly combine individual preferences into a common choice. Achievements are particularly celebrated. His impossibility theorem about the paradoxes of social choice and his welfare theorems, which formalized the most famous intuition in economics, Adam Smith's idea that the market produced social good from individual selfishness. Understanding Arrow's impossibility theorem. Democracy depends on people's voices being heard. For example, when it is time for a new government to be formed, an election is called, and people head to the polls to vote. Millions of voting slips are then counted to determine who is the most popular candidate and the next elected official. According to Arrow's impossibility theorem, in all cases where preferences are ranked, it is impossible to formulate a social ordering without violating one of the following conditions. Known dictatorship. The wishes of multiple voters should be taken into consideration. Pareto efficiency. Unanimous individual preferences must be respected. If every voter prefers candidate A over candidate B, candidate A should win. Independence of irrelevant alternatives. If a choice is removed, then the order's order should not change. If a candidate A ranks ahead of candidate B, candidate A should still be ahead of candidate B, even if a third candidate, candidate C, is removed from participation. Unrestricted domain. Voting must account for all individual preferences. Social ordering. Each individual should be able to order the choices in any way and indicates time. Arrow analyzed the familiar problem of supply and demand. In a well-functioning market for a single good such as apples, there is an efficient outcome with a price at which the number of apples supplied would equal the number of apples demanded. But that was just one market. It was influenced by the market of, for peers, for agricultural land, for farm laborers and even for bank loans. Each market pushed and pulled others. What happened when one considered the interactions between every market in the world? Working at times with the French economist Gérard Debreu, Arrow demonstrated that the intu intuitions from a single market could be generalized. First, there was a general equilibrium at which prices equalized supply and demand in every market at once. Second, this equilibrium was efficient. And third, any efficient allocation of resources could be reached by redistributing 
world and then letting competitive markets take over. Markets could still fail, but Aro's analysis explained the circumstances under which they would succeed. Alongside such deep theoretical work, Aro made many contributions to practical economic problems, from insurance to healthcare to climate change. On occasion, he took an active role on politically contentious issues and was co author of the 1997 Economist's Statement on Climate Change, which warned of the dangers of global warming. He was also known for his love of gossip and his quick wit. One story tells of Arrow and colleagues waiting for an elevator to take them down, while several passed them going up. The colleague wondered aloud why everyone was going up. The immediate reply, you're confusing supply with demand. Arrow's later research translated simple ideas into elegant mathematics, which other economists extended into unanticipated directions. One of those notions was learning by doing, an idea that Arrow examined in the early 1960s. The basic idea was that the more a company produced, the smarter it got. Decades later, economists incorporated this idea into sophisticated theories of indigenous growth, which state that economic growth depends on internal company policies that promote innovation and education. The application of Arrow's general impossibility theorem has gone beyond democracy and election results. It has been used for both welfare economics and social justice and linked to the liberal paradox, which was developed by economist Martia Sen. According to Sen and his paradox, there is generally a conflict between the distribution of goods and services in a society and individual freedom, as both cannot exist at the same time. Both Aero and Hicks have made lasting and wide-ranging contributions to economic theory, from general equilibrium to macroeconomics and welfare economics. In other words, they helped us to understand how work the economic relations in a society, and how some societies had reached a better welfare status. Their works have found policy applications in international trade, project evaluation, taxation, environmental policy, and even in areas of electoral reform. So, now you can have a better perspective of its importance.